Hello and welcome to the next game of the Airships Tournament. I am, uh, again, I'm Imperator Ricardo, if you haven't, if you've forgotten me for some reason. Um, today we have Miowski against Darkonel. On the left side is Miowski, on the right side is Darkonel. So let's have a look at Miowski's ship first, or ships first. We have a saw ship, which uh, looks like it's trying to be a fencing ship. It, I like the look of, the sh of this little shield with the ram inside of it. It really has uh, a known person for it. But um, it has good lift. It's got a big lift chamber and a medium lift chamber, as well as a good propeller and a small one as well. It's a backup. I think it's going to be a very resilient ship and uh, a very fast one to that. Above that, we have a, a ram ship with two Gatling guns. Mm. Yeah, we have um, a big lift chamber and a big propeller. And then we have a pressurized suspendium balloon, which is uh, highly volatile. It's going to explode very easily. So if you hit that, uh, you're going to destroy almost everything uh, adjacent, adjacent to it. Mm, but it's not going to happen because it's mostly in steel armor. Behind that we have a real big ship. And, um, the layout is a bit confusing for me, but uh, it's got two rockets on a separate bay with ammo, uh, ammo, repair bay, guards and everything for its own. It's got cannons on another separate bay with, uh, with two rifles or muskets, also a telescope there. And then we have another separate bay with four cannons and another rifle or musket. This is actually a pretty interesting ship because even it's almost like Call of Duty, a little versatile ship. If you shoot off one part, the other one can still function, at least for the most part, because the, the middle section doesn't have a cockpit. It's a big bit. It's it's a bit big though, and uh, it seems very expensive with have with being clad in steel armor. I think it's still going to perform pretty well, actually. Behind that, we have a carrier of torpedo bombers and a biplane, which is all used to shoot down other planes. Torpedo bombers are a bit of a two-edged blade. If you shoot them down, they are going to die, of course, but if you shoot the bay of them, they can't return to restock the ammo. So you have to keep the carrier safe, otherwise, if they if the base for the... Uh, but the plane gets shot, gets shot away, it's going to be useless, unfortunately. However, it also has three sponsons and a musket or rifle. Um, a bridge. Relatively good uh, lift and propulsion for a carrier. Which I think is uh, actually a pretty good investment here, because it can get away pretty fast if it's uh, endangered. Plus it also has pretty good armor, so I think that's going to be a pretty good ship. Mm. Then in terms of land ships, we have four of the same land ship. It's a little bit of a flag walker with a rifle that has absolutely no armor on it. That's interesting. I like that a lot, actually. I'm, I have to find out how it works. Uh, yeah, that, that's just a little walker, two little ammo bays, a fire extinguisher and a little leg. Good enough for science and for battles. Interestingly enough, it's clad in steel armor as well, mostly. There's some steel wall, but it's actually going to be pretty tough to take down. Now for Dark Connell's ships. We have two of the same ship. It's very small and actually a pretty interesting shape. It's a boarding ship. It has Grenadier base, though. Mm, that's interesting because Grenadiers... Whilst they are pretty strong, they are actually helpless in, in low numbers. Even normal, Q, even normal crew can take them out. Behind that, or a little better said below that, we have an interesting ship. Uh, it's got muskets and a two ballistae. At least I think that's muskets, it might also be rifles. This ship will have to fly very high though to do any damage. It might be able to take on to the uh, flag guns, if it can keep a low profile though. So my, maybe that's a good use for it. Above that, we have uh, bigger ships. Uh, there's one, two, three, four of them. They are um, grenadier bombers. 
Yeah, the Grenadier Bombers. Interesting. They have no other gun. Mm. No, that's only Grenadier Bombers. Interesting. I think that's a bit big for a Grenadier Bomber. But uh, fair enough. If he likes it, it's his ship. I won't object. Below that, we have a little Gatling ship. It's got four Gatling guns. Fire doors, interestingly. Mm. Oh, rarely see those used. Uh, one lift chamber with an addition for some balloons. I think that's going to be put for, to fly pretty high, actually. Only downside is being the propulsion maybe not being optimal. It's clad in steel armor and wood, though. With the armor being quite focused on functionality, put over important modules, good ship, at least for taking on like the armored ones. Behind that we have the biggest ship, I think, uh, by far. It's got three front turrets facing downwards and a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sponsons. Light ones to that, so they are going to eat through the ammo, which I think is smart because he, uh, well, it's not smart that he has so many. I think it's smart that he's got so many ammo base for that because they are actually going to need that ammunition. He's got two Gatling guns, one facing in the front, one facing in the rear, and a deck gun on top, which is going to provide some excellent uh, sh shooting down planes um, help, I guess. It seems like this player is Polish because he's got a Polish leg, so hello to all our Polish viewers. And uh, I think, does he have land ships? He doesn't have any land ships. So with that all taken care of, let's take it on in 3, 2, 1, now. And instantly Mielski's flagships are uh, peppering down some of the big ships, which are just conga lining. One of the big ships has already been destroyed, one of the Grenadier Bombers. Mielski's ramming ship doing quite some decent work. It's uh, basically trying to stop the Grenadier Bombers from uh, getting anywhere. Though I think the Grenadier Bombers are on a disadvantage here, because Mielski's ships are heavily armored anyway, so they weren't gonna do any damage actually. Except for the balloons, maybe, for the lift. Mielski's saw ship has been destroyed. The ramming ship seems to have uh, landed as well. Another big ship, another Grenadier Bomber down. The little flag walkers are getting uh, destroyed. Mielski's big... Uh, um, multi roll ship, I would say, has landed as well, forcefully. Darkonel's uh, grenadier ships have been completely taken care of. The last one seems immobile. The Gatling gun ship also seems to have no guns anymore, or at least be out of ammunition because it doesn't fire anymore. His big ship is still left though, that might still turn the tide with, with a bit of luck. It's currently fighting the remnants of the big multi roll ship. Oh, there's, there's, there's still a torpedo bomber left. I don't think he's going to survive this, uh, actually. The ship has lost a lot of its lift and it can't really fly high anymore. The deck gun is destroyed, I think. No, it's not. It's still going. Well, now it's dead. <laughs> I think Mioski is trying to board his own flag walkers. Well, I think that Darkonel actually uh, boarded them first. Everybody seems, seems immobile. So let's just fast forward in 3, 2, 1, now. If you wonder why I take these countdowns for speeding up or starting the game, 
That's because um, I cannot make this video myself. I need to be in the in the, at the how's it called? The same time as call of it to do actions like starting the game or speeding it up or speeding it down. So um, we need to coordinate. I think that was quite close though. Bakuna surely could have won, uh, could have won if it wasn't for the torpedo bombers. If he could have taken those space out, I think he would have had a much easier game here. But decent job from both sides. All the ships apart from the from the carrier seems to, seem to have crashed one way or, or another. And that's it. Um, yeah, Dark Worlds uh, have been destroyed. Most of the ships have been disarmed. Actually, it's technically the same amount as Miaski. One ship has been surviving. The other one have been immobilized one way or another. Um, yeah, thank you for watching this one. Hope you're gonna be excited for next ones. Because there's going to be quite a few more. And uh, until then, adios. And hello, welcome to the next game. This is Miaski vs. Dark No Part 2. Because this tournament is being mm, carried out in best of three, except for the semi finals and stuff, that's going to be a best of five. As, all, uh, as the last time, Miaski is on the left side, Dark Runo on the right side. Um, let's see. This is the same saw ship that Miaski used in the previous battle, so nothing special to comment on there. This time he has two of the big motor row ships. I think that's because he expects more lightly armored ships, like wood or something like that, or smaller ones maybe. Mm, I think that's going to be quite helpful, actually, because Dark Runo doesn't seem to have that much of firepower on his ships, or at least armor, as they can, these ones can maybe perform quite well here. The classical mm, carrier spec, the plane carrier spec, this time he only has two little flag walkers. Maybe he realized that having four is a bit overkill and might just bite him in the leg more than it helps. On Dark on that side, on the right side, we again have two of the small borders, so nothing special there. This time he has one, two, uh, two of the big ships. No, that's actually all different ships. Interesting. So we know that first one. It's the same one that he used in the last battle, the one that stood last. Pretty pretty good ship actually. Um, then we have the an even bigger one. This one has front turrets everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six front turrets facing to the front, and two facing on the rear. A, a normal cannon facing to the front, a big sponson facing to the front as well. So this ship is has quite a decent firepower. It seems to be pretty low on ammunition, though, so, that, so maybe that's an issue. It has also two sponsors in the back, that's, that are also facing frontwards, and a single Gatling gun in, in the back, that's facing backwards, though. So I think this ship is actually going to be more of a glass cannon, because it, it, it needs to go close to hit the shots that it has, otherwise it's just going to run out of ammunition, and then be pretty helpless. On the far right side, though, we have a a hybrid, a hybrid ship. It has a torpedo bomber and a front turret on the top, and it also has a Gatling gun on the front, and three bombing bays near the front line as well, as well as four front turrets the, facing to, to the front and two facing backwards. Um, the ship is actually pretty well designed, I must say. The front turrets can shoot downwards, as well as the bombs are obviously being dropped down, so. Um, the front turrets can put some holes into the armor, and the bombs can damage the modules, or vice versa. Pretty well made, actually. Pretty well thought. If it's if it is the way that I think. But having that sorted out, let's start the game in three, two, one. Now, the saw ship immediately taking care of the little borders. They don't even get a chance to send off their people.
One of the big ships already lost a big portion of its lift. And that's why I think that these big ships of Mielski are pretty good and well made actually. They have a lot of firepower, a lot of cannons and a few rockets as well, so they are very good against lightly armored ships and even pretty decent against good armored ships. I think the only downside is that, that they may be not fly as high, but uh, sacrifices gotta be made. It appears like Mielski's uh, swordship has somehow been boarded, even though it's already being shot, being shot down. The little bomber, or the big bomber, is taking care of the of the flag walkers. Interesting. Whereas uh, one of Darkonel's big ships has already been shot down, and the other one doesn't even have its main part anymore. Now it's being shot down as well. No, I, no, this one actually has a big lift chamber, so it still keeps going for a little bit. One of Mielski's big ships has been shot down. Though it can still function, because it has a bridge. It's, a basic, it's basically a building now. Both of Mielski's slug walkers have been destroyed. Or at least uh, disarmed. It appears like Dark Connell's big, big ship with a lot of bombers, bombing base, and the front turret seems to give Mielski a few problems because Mielski doesn't have the lift to fly above it. The ship is pretty. It's doing pretty well, as I previously said, it would perform pretty good, and it does. It's the last standing man here. Though it's getting into dangerous zones here, because it's getting shot off, shot at by the building now. By the more or less building, that is. Actual buildings are not allowed in this tournament. The bad side on the ship is, it has no way of shooting down uh, Mielski's torpedo bombers. So it must destroy the bombing base. Nah, it seems like it's getting shot down now. Yep, and it's down. I don't think it's going to recover from this state. All the bombing, uh, not the bombing base, all the balloons have been damaged. And I think at this point it's pretty much game over. So let's speed this up in 3, 2, 1, now. I wonder how this keeps going on for um, quite a few minutes now, seven minutes is this is going to keep on now, because there isn't that much left actually. Ah, Dark Connell's ship has a Gatling gun left. And it's taking care of the torpedo bombers. Because the torpedo bombers are focused on the other ship. The one that doesn't have the Gatling. So that's pretty much a good sign for Dark Connell. Maybe he can still turn this around. No, I think I doubt it. I don't think anybody's going to give up here. <clears throat> that's probably why it's going to take so long. Now Mielski's uh, Poppy Bomber is focused on Darkonel's Gatling ship. Torpedo Bombers are pretty strong, but as I mentioned earlier, as soon as you destroy the bombing bay, they are useless. So you have to decide between normal bombers, which can uh, fly indefinitely, 
or these ones which can deal b bigger damage, but are way more fragile. In the end, it's up to your own taste. And that's it, the uh, Gatling ship is down. Well, destroyed rather. Now we'll just have to wait for the other ship to get slowly chipped away at. It apparently also had a Gatling, but it didn't help in the end. Darkuna loses again, with all his ships being destroyed or mobilized. And only one of Mielski's ship has not been disarmed or mobilized in some way. I think that's actually the... Uh, well, it's not a carrier. It must be one of... It must be the big ship that looks like a building now. But thank you for watching this one. Stay tuned for more. And thank you for watching. Adios.